All righty. Yeah, Jacques, do you want to kick off? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, with uh, with today, I really want to be able to dive into what like, like some conceptual thoughts for like the the way we can kind of structure and have people walk through these DAOs and just like by us doing it ourselves, I guess. So um, similar to how like there's like a 10 part structure to the to the overall DAO, I'm, I'm also trying to think of like how can like the, the different levels of things operate. So like even I wanted to start off by just drawing out some ideas of like how like the I think the overall ecosystem could work um, just based on a roof, uh, a rough outline that I have, but it's like the, the basis of it. I'm, I've been thinking about it. Like my mental model is like the, the, the days centralized autonomous education system. And then like, that's like the layer zero or it's like the, the Bitcoin settlement layer you can think of. And then like on top of that are like different departments that are actual DAOs. Um, so like there could be one for like onboarding new brands. There could be one for like new new ecosystems and, and things like that. Uh, one for curriculums like that, uh, that Jill's working on, a DAO for like how they create their NFT certificates. And then on top of those DAOs could be, like those could be set. Like those are set departments within the School of Bitcoin. It's like the, uh, the layer one. And then on top of that is like the composable aspect where it's just sub DAOs, which are the curriculum. So if there's someone who wants to create a course, they can go to the set DAO uh, that like we put together with Jill. And then on top of that, you can have an infinite number mm. of sub DAOs. So it could be, it wouldn't have to be, um, let's just use like, like Digital Playhouse for an example. If Digital Playhouse was like, okay, we're gonna create a, um, a course for you know like for one of our, our top our favorite courses to be a part of with cool bitcoin they could come in and then just like clone uh like the uh, the curriculum dao and then from there can turn it into whatever they want but then it would fit with the same structure of that specific dao and then it would feed into the, the overall decentralized autonomous education system so it's like a layer zero one and two um yep so like the way I'm the way I'm thinking about it is like if we can we can kind of start with this where like Kieran we kind of talk to you and say okay how are you thinking about like the whole decentralized autonomous education system should work and then from there we can jump over um, so like once we have like that kind of like conceptualized then we'll also be able to jump to to Jill with her experience with curriculum and say how should like the curriculums be structured and they would they're both going to follow the same outline they'll just be at different like different layers in the uh in the overall structure that's kind of like how this will be how, how this will be outlined so let me i want to share my screen here let me try to get to this first yeah i had, I had a good good read through your your notes uh jacques they're quite quite uh quite dense it's good i've got probably lots of questions <laughs> as we go yeah. through it. and probably yeah. I yeah, wasn't yep. able to answer a lot, of, a lot of stuff in there so yeah and that's kind of it's like the idea is that we can kind of just talk through it together and then yeah I'm sure like, it'll, this will just be yeah it'll be really helpful to to clarify a lot of it yeah and then um then sort of reconvene next week that'll yeah. be good yeah. um let's see I had a um had a another chat with uh, Peter Hutton and um, actually set him up with a wallet of Satoshi um, address, so his first Bitcoin. And um, it was funny, like setting it up. Well, you know, like the magic of like holding up a QR code and being able to send it like through the camera. It didn't work. <laughs> I think uh. his camera was his camera was too crap or something. And I was like, oh man. So, but he sent me the the link and I sent it to him. And he, he asked something interesting, like while we were doing that, he said, why does it feel, kind of jokingly, he said, why does it feel like I'm doing something illegal? Yeah. Quote, unquote. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh man. Is that, yeah. what, is that, is that where people, a lot of people's minds still are? It's interesting. Yeah. So I'm relatively new uh, to, to the whole thing. And it was about 
uh, 16 months ago that I did the first purchase. And as I was doing, I felt ooh, like exactly the same. It's like, really? should, I be, should I be doing this? Yep. Fascinating. Yeah. And my journey like has been really intense since then. Uh, the yeah. minute that I saw it go up, like I couldn't believe it. I was like, it was Binance was the first thing I purchased. And it, it, it straight away um, went off and I'm like, that's real money. That's real return. Okay. What else are we doing? And from there, it wasn't about just about the money. Obviously the money's great, but it was about, so what's this all about? Cause I had to understand what it was I was doing. And so, yeah, you're right. The, the first thing is, gosh, does anybody else know about this and should I be doing it? Yeah. yeah. It was, I found it really interesting. There was that, I had, had a, another chat the other night with, um, one of my friends has been, he's mining, he's been in the, like the space for years and he's been following like everything we're doing online as well. Um, but he still had a disconnect between what is the Lightning Network and what is Bitcoin and how do I purchase Lightning tokens with Bitcoin? And I was like, I've, like for me, I was like, oh, don't you understand? Like once you have Bitcoin, you have Lightning. It's the, it's the same thing. Um, and then I remembered like when I was first going through uh, like setting up a node and setting up a lightning wallet, I had that question as well. And I kind of forgot about it. So that's, it's like all these little nuances that you kind of forget along the way that we probably need to address like as, um, as some part of the curriculum as well. Anyway, sorry, sorry, Jock. <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. I mean, that, that is, that is really interesting. I mean, it does seem like a little like like degenerate activity like if, if, if you're doing something wrong when you're first setting this stuff up yeah it's funny. um okay yeah let's well, we could dive into this so like this the first of the the first section is really just meant to kind of like uh introduce your like the overall mission that you're thinking of with this first project so like within the school of bitcoin this is for like decentralized autonomous education system and i'll just read through this so like, so like the, the focus of this is to develop a conceptual set of open source mission statements that the community can use to effectively communicate the collective focus um, in their own way. So each mission statement is gonna be paired with a book just to provide like depth and context to the project's evolution. And the idea with that is that if people are able to see, like they'll see your mission statement and they'll be like, okay, great. But then if they wanted to like get a deeper sense of what you really mean behind it, then they can look at the books, they can see quotes that you've shared, and it just gives a little bit more uh, more nuance to, to what the ecosystem is going to be working on. So um, can I jump in there with a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. I was thinking, like, for the for the School of Bitcoin, I was having to think about different um, books that might reflect that as a whole without mentioning Bitcoin, and I think probably mm -hmm. The Sovereign Individual is the one that kind of springs to mind the most because there's so many good quotes in it. It's so old. Well, I mean, relatively old, 90s. Yeah. And it kind of predicted where we're at or where we're moving to now um, as a society. So would that be like the overarching, um, like an example of an over, overarching book that we could use yeah, for, yeah. for that? That would be perfect. That'd be really interesting. I've never heard of that book. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So like It'll blow your I'm mind. Like, you, need, you need to read it. Yeah. And and see, like, and that's like, that's the idea behind this is that like, once you like think about this, like, oh, I, I have the perfect book that would fit in here. And then I'm sure so many people in the, in the community haven't read it either. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, let's, I, I'm, I'm, I'll, as we go through this, I'll try to figure out where, where it'll best, best fit. So like this first section uh, is kind of like meant to define like what the overall challenge of the community and, and how, what it's, how we're going to be exploring it. So what like institution or like societal system do you think like is, uh, is gonna be the overall focus of the School of Bitcoin? I have some examples of like the language or economic um, might be the one I would think or education. Education, I'm yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll just put that in. I'm, I'm taking notes on my other screen should, so should we okay. should we edit this like as we go like uh that was my other question I, I'm, like, edited, I'm editing the screen here so i'm logging this in as you answer it's just i can't do it on this uh, okay okay it just well, it won't then, read as easy that, that was my other question should i be 
forking this and should we do it so other people can see if you know what i mean so it... i'm, I'm kind we... of just going to be your answers here okay and then uh, like at the end of it so like even at the end i'll be i'll be putting all uh, i'll be putting all the answers in so like this is going to be like your basically gotcha like, should yeah, should your, we do uh, should we do that one and then maybe for jill's we'll do that on the screen so people can follow along with that one yeah. yeah, sure. I mean, maybe I can just do it in here. I was thinking it might be hard to read the markdown, but I guess it'll be fine. Let me just do it right here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, let's Good. do that. It works. Yeah, it works well. Cool. Um, Gordon, thanks for that link. I've got it on my screen. I haven't read the book. Oh, is it for the sovereign individual? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, cool. Okay, so looking at the education system. So like, uh, what's a challenge that you think is created by the, uh, by the education system right now? Uh, financial literacy. And like, what is like the, like what's behind, like what's the, like the cause of the challenge? Like what's the root of it you think? Confusion. Confusion. 100%. <laughs> Yeah, can you can you expand on that? That's interesting. I'll, I'll put some yeah, notes in here. Definitely. So I think the the crux of it is you have um, conflicting definitions on what financial literacy means because it means so much to so many different people yeah. um, across the world, and there's no consensus. and And I think the 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 main part is it's so important to everything else that you really have to get it right. Um, and that's something that uh, there's no institution really doing, whether it's, you know, um, primary school, high school or higher ed, it's um, extremely confusing across the board. I jump in and suggest that part of this challenge with financial literacy is because we're, and I think I just scanned very quickly the sovereign individual, but I think it's because the world is undergoing a seismic change in um, the way that um, way that financial um, systems are um, used and perceived and deployed and um, therefore that's why the challenge is not just financial literacy because that sort of assumes that um, it, it's I'm not saying it is but it sort of suggests that you know there's there's sort of dumb people out there because they're just not financial literate, literate. But I think it's that extra layer of change that's happening that we're at the cusp of um, system change. And um, when have we seen this before? Like, you know, going back to millennia, it's like there's not many times when we've actually had a, a seismic shift in financial systems. And I think that's why we've got the challenge with understanding financial literacy moving forward. Am I right? I think, yeah, I think what you, you're you getting at is maybe, and I, I've, I've sort of grappled with this as well, mm -hmm. is financial literacy, like that terminology, people kind of balk at it and find it offensive. Like, I'm not yes. aware of it. What do you mean? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> mm. um, which is true, but at the same time, um, I don't know if it matters if I, I think you kind of want it to activate something, you know what I mean? So I think mm -hmm. it's like if people go away and go, wait, am I financially literate? Uh, do, what, what do I need to learn? Like what's the missing gaps? Um, and it's also like, like we were saying to Peter and Michelle uh, last week, like calling it the school of Bitcoin. I've wrestled with that as well. Like, so uh, is that going to turn people off? Is that going to, um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, people say that, like, like Peter Hutton, is this something illegal that I'm doing? And I think you, you want it, it wants to be like, you want to have that terminology front and center because we all know that's like the end goal. Yes. Um, and that's like going through a financial literacy uh, program, like, like we've all kind of just done it on our own. Um, yeah, yeah. But the end goal is like, or the, the uh, outcome is Bitcoin, like everyone kind of comes to that on their own. So I think having that as the, the overarching name is just as important as the terminology around financial literacy. Um, it, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Is it financial literacy then for the 21st century? Ah, now that's something. 
It's just. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I really like, like that. Gordon, what do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, up until today, they never gave us any financial literacy in regards to how the mo- how money is created or its relevance to gold and how gold over time for 5,000 years mm-hmm. has been like the, the anchor for money until yep. they decide, until they uncouple it and they uncouple it all the time and then they blow it out into a, mm-hmm. a fiat money printing system. And mm-hmm. now we've got the new, really, we've just got a new system which has got a, uh, a better you know, far better use um, or and, and liquidity and being able to share Transparent. globally 24 Transparency. 7, yep. free, free to get on. But it's really that's that, that you know, not the replacement of gold, but essentially that, the, you know, well, the, that's the question. Is it going to become the new gold standard? Mm. The Bitcoin standard. Bitcoin <laughs> so standard. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like, you know, and so this is a new concept in financial literacy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do like that, the Jill. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. like 21st century learning, 21st, 21st century financial literacy. Yeah. yeah. 5,000 years of one system and, and now yes. the, the, the digital era is all right. You know, the digital, What what's the digital system now going to be? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's, that's going to be really, that's going to be really good here. So like, I mean, like you want to, to pair a book with, uh, with everything that you, talked through you think the sovereign individual should be for this then yes yeah. definitely and Ooh. whether or not yeah whether or not that's confusion and uncertainty because they're different things and i think that's that uncertainty is exactly what we're feeling at the moment because you know is it going to be gold is it going to be you know and so to com- to sort of come yeah um slash uncertainty that sort of compounds people's fear because they just don't know which way to go and therefore they doubt themselves with regards to their financial literacy mm-hmm. right yeah that's perfect yeah it's really good, yeah, it's really good. um so yeah th- that's then there'll just be like an output so like it'll just say that like confusion and uncertainty is in our education institution let me put this in I actually added another book into the resources, um, the Don Tapscott book. Oh yeah, later, which is um, the big, you know, the blockchain revolution. So that's okay. that's actually really describes so sort of that the how technology by Bitcoin is changing money, business, and the world. Cool. And um, they, that's a book which is um, I, he has a really good TED talk, which is, which is really easy to watch for people who are edu- wanting to be educated. And yep. then it's one of the main resource books that's being used in the advanced diploma of applied blockchain as well. Oh, okay. So he's he's very good at expo- you know in in yeah. not just not just blasting out the Bitcoin message. It's just the you know anyway. It's good. Awesome. Thank I'll, you. I'll check it out. Yeah, I'm looking um, at it now. Has it got a yeah, good those... audio book as well? Oh, I'd say so. Yeah. I think that's really important and it's something that a lot of people it's actually one of the first things i watched um was the don pat scott ted talk which oh, cool. went, okay. i went wow awesome. i didn't know about this it's like freaked me out i went mm. yeah i was actually uh suggesting or going to suggest a few books to peter hutton to read and uh, i totally forgot that he's got dyslexia i'm like oh yeah gosh wow Has like, he? Yeah, yeah. So he does a whole TED talk on it as well. Actually, it's fantastic. Oh, you should should check it out. I will. I will. Um, Amazing. But this, yeah, there's so much, um, so much around that, and so many students mm. or learners, we could call them, have mm. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that uh, it's that they're kind of um, there's a lot of prejudice against them mm. without people realizing. It. It's like, oh, you don't read. Well, like, oh, okay. But they consume just as much content through mm. audio mm. and through video. It's just the mediums change for them. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's so that, that sovereign individual audio book is fantastic as well. So <laughs> that's why I picked that. Mm. All right. So for this uh, this next section, uh, it's it's basically related on biometry. So now that we identified the challenge of financial illiteracy and just confusion in general. Uh, around the subject now it's just like this is a little bit kind of like stretching like how we traditionally approach things but biomimicry is pulling solutions from from nature for like design and engineering solutions um so with this i'm just going to be asking about um 
just like, are there any systems in nature that you kind of would relate to the school of Bitcoin or like, uh, like the Bitcoin yeah, in I general? Got, I got stuck on this one. I wasn't too sure. <laughs> yeah, that's which is which is completely fine. I and mean, this is basically something that I involve myself with a lot. So I mean, there's, I mean, there's there's so many different ways that you can kind of think of Bitcoin. It's like, um, like the way that like the mycelial network in a forest, like that's just like the roots of the fungi, basically. I mean, it's, it's like it creates an entire communication system between them. Um, so okay. like that would be learning from like the roots of the fungi and how, like, how it transmits information and like kind of like runs the show behind the scenes is a pretty cool analogy to Bitcoin. Also like the, um, on the cover of the, like the, mastering bitcoin book they have leaf cutter ants because of how they're oh, the okay. system they're like they yeah. their entire system runs around again really around around fungi and mycelium but they harvest all of the leaves um they transport them back and they're all kind of work i mean it's it's centralized around the idea of the queen but like it's decentralized and all of the everyone that's working in the system is able to work independently mm -hmm. and autonomously. so it's like a way for us to teach people about like nature while we're also, we could also find some innovative solutions as we dig deeper into like some of these natural systems. So I, I honestly think leaf cutter ants would be a good one. It's, and it does tie to like resources out there, but. Um, mm. So is using that an analogy for an analogy for transfer of, um, transfer of understanding. Hmm. That's what you're suggesting. Mm. It's, yeah. I, I love yeah. that um, analogy to nature. and. Mm. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I mean, this is something that we can keep thinking of, right? So I'm just going to yeah. put in some of these ideas. We don't have to land on any of these. Um, you can kind of think about this a little more, but that's that's the general concepts of this. Um, I'll just put these in the notes. So I'll yeah. see my helium. Is, is there an example yeah. of... Um in nature i guess everything is really but like strict rules without rulers because the, with the ants obviously they have the queen mm -hmm. as the ruler mm -hmm. i suppose uh even though it, it, it makes sense but i think that um oh, you remember we yeah. need to do some research and find something yeah. that as well. i mean my but mycelium I, would be mycelium is a pretty good one i mean it's completely decentralized there's no really like yeah okay and it, it's, it's, no. it's a set of rules yeah 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 yeah, and there's there's no yeah, and that's the, I mean they're set on a set protocol, right? They're just kind of trying to yeah. trans, or basically just like transferring the energy of decaying uh, matter. Like a tree falls down, the mycelium comes in, and then turn it into the soil that can then be used again. So mm -hmm. like, it's kind of, how are we taking the ideas and concepts from around the world, digesting them through all the different courses that we have, and like turning them into like whatever society becomes next you know i like that i really and, like that and and there's so many cool reasons like there's this cool uh, documentary called fantastic fungi so like school bit kind of could like partner with them in different ways and stuff like different ways that this could lead to like a uh, really interesting like ways of explaining bitcoin in different ways and if we use nature as this it can be more than like oh yeah we <laughs> we use all the waste energy and all like the renewable energy is cool, but also just like viewing how Bitcoin is transmuting energy mm. uh, drawn from nature would just, it, it's another really interesting way that we can talk about that would differentiate school Bitcoin from a lot of others. Can I jump in and say something yeah. a bit crazy? Um, you know, if you were doing something that was... Crazy. Crazy <laughs> um, well, I was just thinking, uh, you know, this, this is really crazy. But um, I've been on, like, a lot of the sites like Celsius. They have their own um, shop for Celsius swag. And I was just thinking when you were saying this, you could get a great T-shirt actually with the analogy of what you're trying, like the picture, and then something like decentralized school of Bitcoin or something, so that the image is on the T-shirt and then sort of the the one motto, maybe in like adjoined to this where we maybe have some brand, you know, building like you you, you were talking about that brand identity. I mean, it's simple, but at the same time, everybody likes a T-shirt that actually people like T-shirts that actually have something that's that makes you often think because then people will say oh interesting t-shirt and then there's a story behind it which actually is a clever story because it's actually latching into what you're talking about 
What are you saying? Yeah. Down the track. Down the track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm putting these it's notes a, in here. It's a great um down. there's a great store called uh Red Red Bubble that lets you do that. Yes, um, yeah. you can build build them mm. out, and you can yep. you can host, and they're pretty easily without having it, to do it, too much. Without yeah, without having to put dollars out, right? I was just thinking because I, I, when I looked at Celsius, I was like, he's got swag. Like, what on earth? Why would you? Why would you do that? But why not? <laughs> you know, you're getting your brand out there and getting people to talk about it. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think we could that, even get really get learners to actually design something. That'd be cool. Yeah, very. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. Or like the, like they could design NFTs for these courses, and then we could turn those into yes. like t-shirts. T-shirts, yeah. Yes, great idea. Great project. Um, yeah, one t-shirt um, with the hash on. It. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the only one that can own this t-shirt. <laughs> so, interestingly, there's an Australian blockchain project called Mycelium. Ah, oh. is there really? Wow. Yeah, I've just put it in the post there. I mean, they they basically provide self custody solutions. They're, they're real quiet. They're real quiet achievers. They, they um, had some, achieved some significant milestones. I think got a massive injection, a capital raise not too long ago, I think. Um, and it's, it's about around the Bitcoin wallet. It's an in-person oh, really? nice exchange, um, Bitcoin card, entropy, there's gear. Um, oh, is that? <laughs> It's been around since 2013. <laughs> so they'd be interesting guys. I, I think they might actually be in Brisbane. Yeah, oh, I'm just looking them up now. Yeah. I remember this. Oh, yeah. wow. They've been it's super, not... super quiet, but they're really, they're actually going to be a blockchain week. So, um, but yeah, they've just been chipping away, but their gear looks really good. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, they've, uh, got, they've got a great wallet. Yeah. I, didn't know they were, I didn't know they were Australian. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Um, so yeah, just is that the same spelling? <laughs> they must have come up with that word from somewhere, Jacques. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just looking yeah. now. Anyway, yeah. and this one, this next question, yes. I think will will be. This is meant to just say, okay, the challenge that we identified was financial literacy. So we might need to think about this a little differently. But like, so like, nature always takes challenges and, and turns them into. It's especially with mycelium, it takes death and turns it into life. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna have to try to like turn, like, I think this is something we can kind of like talk about a little bit more later, but the idea here is, okay, like with the challenge that we identified, how does mycelium turn that into a benefit so that we can, I guess, how do we turn financial literacy into a benefit? We might need to think of a different, word here but um i think it's super like cool a, a benefit for um the, of the community so oh, yeah that's a how do we how do we word it, that in terms of that yeah i mean and, and this is something i think maybe even financial literacy might not be the because mm. i guess we'll be able to dive into the specifics of financial literacy later but i'm just like uh, it might, there might be a different word, but again, we can come back to it later. This is kind of going to be an ongoing, evolving yeah. process. I think this is a good yeah. start. Right now. Um, no, we can have a think with, before next week. Yeah. In, and then in, in, my, in my dives into DAOs lately, I mean, there's a whole new world of financial literacy there out there that I, you know, I mean, I sort of sort of around the edges, but it's it's intense. You start diving down there, there's like mm-hmm. incredible, incredible what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there, there's there's lots, yeah. I think that's a good path to go down. Yeah, there okay. is a transformation that's that that's being created out of there that out of this that that hasn't evolved before, and and it's it's going to be quite incredible. Mm. Yeah, oh, for sure. If you, if you look at like the example of um, uh, Shapeshift, it's like what's happened. Eric Voorhees company, and what he's actually done. I think it's an amazing example of where we're going with like. 21st century uh, financial literacy. Mm-hmm. He actually dissolved his company into a DAO, um, specific and uh, into open source software. So it's Shapeshift is now um, just software that you can uh, download and anyone can run. And basically, got rid of the company like specifically. Yeah, like, uh, that's pretty much um, that's pretty much what I was finding. I've been listening to uh, 
it, it's just like that is where we're going. Mm-hmm. Companies, everything. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, I've got an eight hour session there with some lawyers and DAOs, which I'll drop in, which ever anyone can um, chew away on for the next week. <laughs> but there's lots of conversations about that. Awesome, awesome. That's one for Wednesday, I think. <laughs> um, and then this next part will be figure out a book for for this. I mean, I, I have some in mind, but um, we can just look around. Like, if there are books about mycelium, and like as we learn more about them, we can kind of like relate that to to Bitcoin and the school of Bitcoin in different ways. Um, yeah, so you were talking book. about creating some books there, Jobs. No, like this is like books that we would use as Reference. resources. Okay. Yeah references yeah yeah so, when i first when i first read it right back there i thought you might be creating books um even in a short form you know yeah i was thinking in a, in a sense this this whole structure is going to be like a book like this is like the introduction to like the book of how you create a decentralized autonomous education system but that's um, um I, I wondered sorry to jump in I, gordon i was thinking sure. when i read it i i thought i don't know whether you can see that i was thinking of a book that actually visually in a sort of an easy to not kid like but basically um you, you can't really see that because it's too blurry but basically you hold it in front of your face i think we can see it so <laughs> it, this is this is okay so this is a book that says hello brain and it's to explain neuroscientists to kids at a school level and it's quite complex but actually it breaks it down with pictures and Ooh. words so that the simplicity there's complexity but it's simple and i wondered whether or not when i read it that actually um somebody actually takes the complexity and um does i don't, I don't know who but does a simple book like exactly what you were saying gordon so it's more um specific to the school of bitcoin as opposed to a range of resources but that's just how i interpreted what you were suggesting oh okay with this right here yeah with your with okay. your book idea but yeah, yeah. that's okay. that's what we interpreted but that's keep rolling yeah 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 i mean well that's that's good to know i mean maybe we should think of a different uh, nomenclature so it's like this will be if other people are cloning this like let's we should make yeah. sure that it's Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Oh, that's no, well, that's very helpful. And and also, so we for the interest of inclusion, um, rather than sort of limiting to just books, should resources. we say media in general or resources? Resources, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't. Um, the there's so like there's another section where we're going to be able to have like like video content and stuff as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, but. I don't, like like we should look into um I want to see the values. See you good. See you good. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Gordon. And then Yeah, because there are other like really good articles and stuff like that. So and, and yeah, maybe like all the resources that we're compiling right now, it could be really good in here. And then the the last one is just going to be a book that kind of, uh, again, just yeah, another the book, but like a book that kind of like defines how this, like the, the decentralized autonomous education system will operate moving forward. So there are some books about like habits, there are books about like focus or concentration, like just um, ways that people, like ways that, uh, the community will kind of like operate on a, on a large scale. I'm trying to think. And again, yeah, this is something I could I could help with some suggestions, but uh, um, some we can always build on. Like there's like Jim Quick has a book called Limitless. Yep, um, I've read that. There's another book called like The Infinite Resource, which is talking about like the human imagination being like the like the like the last. Uh, the final frontier that we haven't really explored yet like just different like there are different books okay. like that so and we yeah, can kind of yeah. like we'll keep throwing them into like the resources doc that you started and then we can kind of yeah. like we can pop them in as, as this makes more sense so when you're doing this um i think yeah. my question in the resources you might have seen because I, I started working a little bit in that resources tab and i started asking questions uh i'm just in there now i think one of the questions i've got is um, like uh, like the coin market cap 
type situation as um, things change with regards to who's using what resource does it um, does it go to like most viewed are we able to put Ooh. in there something like you know who in the community is most reading uh, limitless by Jim quick for example so it's actually mm. one of the top viewed in say we've got a, a DAO of maybe a million members you know um, 83 percent of the people have actually read it and ticked it or something is that the kind of thing that you're thinking okay. which do you know what I mean in the programming sense you know if you go into your BBC news um, feed and it says most most viewed uh, most pop popular articles or whatever and you go yeah. oh, is that what people are reading is that the kind of thing as opposed to suggesting like one book because the, the the concerns obviously in suggesting one of anything um oh yeah and, and also when you get to different communities like um in latin america or you know the school of bitcoin is presumably global with regards to the structure that you're putting in place so um presumably they will have their own uh texts that are more Content. specific yeah. to their culture language and um interest levels yeah yeah well that kind of brings us full circle back to like one of our original conversations around that like we were talking i suppose quite similar in terms of having like a reddit style system where you can upvote mm. um stuff yeah. to the top so yeah that makes a lot of sense for sure yeah and in jill like to like to, like to answer your initial question like the the concepts like the programming side of this is like if you put a, a book out there then like as the community is going through it, like like one of the ways that people can like play along with the game here, they share a quote to like Twitter from the book and they use like the school Bitcoin hashtag. It can be like pulled in and we can see who is contributing to like the open source mission statement. Uh, yes. It's out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, but then also it's like, that's a very good point, especially with this being like the, the foundational layer of things like, mm limiting it to a certain book i don't know but like also maybe okay, i guess like i guess it's our zero. thinking as well isn't it so like what have we come to by uh consensus between the group yeah. that's important yeah. for that it doesn't necessarily mean that's like the be all and end all it's just no. where we're uh, we're at with our thinking now anyone who right. it can, can do whatever they want so yeah that makes it's sense and that's kind of that's yeah. kind of the beauty of the then no once one DAO, no one curriculum needs to come up with like all the books. It's like, mm -hmm. here's here's the book that I'm throwing in there. And there could be overlaps, obviously, if a lot of different, pe different people like them. But the idea yep. is like, this is the book we're putting out. You guys put out some other books that you think are good. Like, if you think we missed the mark with this, show us how we should have done it better. And then it kind of like, we can pair things yeah. in competitive yeah, ways, kind of, so, like present information in more unique ways. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you, you yeah, can fork you can fork the school of Bitcoin and make it better. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make us redundant. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that, that'll be impossible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, okay, and then like the that's the thing that's good there, and then the last the last one is just like a song that and these and these can all, all another great way to think about this is that this can be evolving all the time. This doesn't have to be set in stone. The book can change every month. Like the song for this can change as often as we want. We can do with this however we want, you know? So, um, but the idea with this this last part is like, okay, we defined the challenge. We picked out something in, in nature that we can like learn from to address the challenge. And then like we defined how we're gonna be move, moving forward as a community. And then like, this is just like a kind of a song to represent, represent that. Um, so my choice, was uh for this it's a classic by boogie down productions called you must learn <laughs> <laughs> cool and i think it kind of speaks for itself with uh krs1 quote unquote the teacher <laughs> <laughs> all right perfect um let me just update this right now. I mean, that's that's really it. Um, so, and I'm, I'll show you here. It's like we have like the the action items after this. So, like this was just like a run through. So, we'll be able to like go through and kind of like finalize some of these as we get more resources and uh, figure out the wording we want to use. 
Um, and then I'll like add these responses to the overall metadata that the readme file. And then like next week, we'll be able to start going through the, the next section, which is more diving into um, like the specifics in the roadmap for how this whole thing will be laid out. But then oh, like cool. from here, from here, it'll be, um, we're gonna create a GitHub discussion for each of the books selected. So even in here, like I'm essentially gonna be like putting in book quotes from like the different books that we that we come up with. And this will be a way to kind of like have GitHub be a place where people can kind of discuss and share uh, their knowledge in different ways. Um, um, and then- uh, Can I ask a like question? Yeah, can I ask sure. a question about that as well? So I'm just on Goodreads, um, which you probably know, you know, the Goodreads site. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So um, is that sort of a little bit like that in that you get a rating, the opportunity to rate? Um, presumably, I mean, with Goodreads, it, it you can click and it goes out onto your Twitter or whatever. But also, is there... Is there an option to maybe have, I don't know whether this is what you're thinking, but have that Amazon code um, laid into it so that if the books are there that people want to go and press and click, then they go straight to the store, but actually then is, um, it pertains or that code pertains to that particular DAO. Is that the kind of thing or am I reading that wrongly? Uh, yeah, in a sense. I mean, like, so as people are sharing these quotes on like social media and using the school of Bitcoin hashtag. Some reference, like people from the school of Bitcoin can be like, oh, let's turn this quote and this person's like question into an NFT that we'll put out into the community and that could be kind of like tied to things. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, I'm like, this is gonna be as broad as you can think about it. Like everything that we went through is the only way that it's really set. Um, it's gonna be like, Take out these books, share them on uh, on social media if you like with the hashtag, and then from there the community can do with them whatever they want. So like even what you were just saying right there, I didn't have that in mind. Sure, yeah, why not? That's that's kind of the idea. Like keep it super like what if we what what could we do with book quotes that would make this interesting, and then the community can come up with whatever they want at that point. Uh, so I think that idea, I think that'd be great. Yeah. Um, um, I, was, I was just going to ask as well. So I've been going through that um, Google doc, like the readme.md. Yep. Um, so next week we'll go through like B1 community decentralization uh, space, etc. What would you like to do? I don't know. I was thinking like the second part could be going through this with Jill, but maybe that might be a little redundant right now. So maybe we can hop and look into that next section right now, just like high level. Yeah, um, that'd be cool. And then we can, we can maybe do the curriculum side next week. Yeah, as we, as we like, I feel like next week we'll be able to like present like, okay, this is actually like the cleaned up version. This is what we figured out. And then like we can yep. jump into the curriculum. Yep, okay, sounds cool. good, sounds good. Okay. So let me, so should I jump to that Google Doc? Or do I have it in here? Yeah, that's what I, I, I was trying to figure that out as well. Was it already in the? I don't think I put it in here yet. Cause I was, okay. was kind of like Google Doc was easier, easier for me to edit. And then like the final version was put into the Issues. Okay. I don't think Would, is that do you reckon that's the best best way for someone who's forking this to do it like just write it up in whatever document there is and then their final version sort of committed to github so the way that this will work for other people that clone this once all of these like once um let's just say like this this issue that we just went through once this structure is set where it's like okay this makes sense i think this formatting can still be better so it's a little clearer once that's set within uh the repository here there will be a folder and it'll be a uh, it'll be issue templates so when people copy this they will have issue templates for each one of these that we go through so right now we're creating the templates that's in there for them gotcha so for for jill or for us going through the yeah. curriculum next week will fork one of those issue templates to do that specifically. So maybe, maybe we do that. Uh, Jill, have you got a GitHub account? I do, yeah. Uh, awesome. So maybe mm -hmm. next week we we get you to share your screen yeah. and we'll walk you through how to how to do that. That might be the yeah. best way for other That's people a really to good, follow along. That's a really good idea. Yeah, I like that a lot. 
Okay. And that'll be good. And I'll put the I'll put the actual um yeah, I'll put the uh the templates in here. That'll be good. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Um let me see. Oh, on your iPad. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like trying to like as I do this, I'm like, how does how can I do this where it actually works for me? You're um, typing typing pretty well on the iPad. It's it's good, impressive. I've got, I've got a keyboard connected ah, nice. to it. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so you, you want to like look at this community section real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like with, with this community aspect, it's really meant to be like, okay, this is gonna be like the you think of like for the decentralized autonomous education system, this is like the infrastructure. This is gonna be, okay, the first section was saying, this is the challenge and this is kind of like the vibe of the community, it's kind of vague, but this is gonna be, this is how we're gonna actually tackle financial literacy. Um, so with this, it's outlining the conceptual plans for how the community is gonna create a decentralized ne uh, network to address the challenge. Um, and really like the, with this, it's like, it's really it's difficult for teams sometimes to express the needs that they have so that contributors and open source communities can figure out exactly where they can plug in. So like, mm -hmm. that's what this is going to be. So it's like, this is a roadmap that shows deliverables for the conceptual design, but also it shows the outline for like, this is the section, if you want to help us with design, this is where you go. If you want to help us with like curriculums, this is where you go. Um, so that's really what this is meant to, to, to help us shake out. Um, okay, so let's see. Yeah, so the focus of this first section, which is for decentralization, is to, uh, to bring clarity to the industry job role and product that the community is going to be decentralizing. And so like the first section, the first question is what industry will your project influence? Um, so I guess it's the, like within uh, education. Yeah. That's two, it's two things really, isn't it? It's obviously education, but it's also the um, broader financial communities as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that's the right word, maybe not. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I mean, even just throwing these out, it's good, just like whatever's, like whatever flows. And like, yep. within that, like what would be like the job description of the School of Bitcoin? Within like this whole thing, um, and maybe this is different because it's like, I don't know, like this makes more sense for like the departments and the DAOs, but I think, uh, what who runs the overall system of an education system? Like the, the governing body. Um, yeah. Essentially, there's going to be like, we're going to be creating a decentralized alternative to this entity that already exists. So some, it's good to have something for people to point to. So, yeah. So gen in Australia, generally, I think what you're referring to in Australia, um, so down in Victoria, it'd be like the Victorian Curriculum Assurance Quality Assurance Committee. Um, so in, in Australia, in, sorry, in Queensland, we've got the Queensland, um, it's quality assurance uh, for curriculum is basically, is that what you're talking for, about? Some sort of- for, for terms are like, like we are defining, like this is what the education will be. Is curriculum an aspect of like overall thing? Do you know what yeah. I mean? I, so, for this. like for this, for because I just like I guess my knowledge of education is, is limited, but like I'm like the superintendent, right? Like that, they kind of like oversee the overall role of how everything operates. Or yeah, like that, dean, that's dean, that's that's dean, like a compliance. Um, that's like compliance. So in in Queensland, it's Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority, but it's compliance. And in Victoria, I'm just trying to remember. I think it's Victorian Curriculum and Assessment Authority. So it's the authority. They call themselves the authority because they've been given the mandate of authority from the Queensland government or from the Victorian government. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, so on top of that, then you've got the legislative powers 
from the federal government, which is ACARA, which is the Australian uh, curriculum. I'm just, I'm looking up the, I know all the acronyms, but I'm trying to yeah. use ACARA is, and this is for Australia. So every, around the world, it's similar sort of thing. So uh, Australian Curriculum Assessment and Reporting Authority, and it's a statutory authority that reports federally from um, within Australia. So it's got members that are um, given that, that authority and then it goes to state level and then the states have their own um, and they have to report to ACARA so that's how the sort of as you say sort of the fork happens and then say for example if you take the, the state of Queensland and it's the same in Victoria and the same across um, we have our authority that deals with that compliance but then we have our Department of Education and it's a different body so the Department of Education mm. will actually run um, like pedagogy, which is how to teach, and they'll actually develop resources. And the Department of Education often has battles with um, the authority and also battles with the independent sector and the Catholic sector. So they're mm. uh, competing sectors. So you've got four different bodies plus the fifth body, which is the federal body. And I'm sure within America, within uh, jurisdictions around the world, they've got different um, sometimes competing um and that's maybe why this is different because you don't need to compete as much. But that's, I think, the yeah. We don't want to. We don't want to compete at all. <laughs> no, no, yeah. that's right. <laughs> right. Agendas, that's, the political that's what agendas. I'm just thinking. So, like, yeah, I was thinking, like, like uh, whatever you call a car, so like, um, yep, re reporting authority, I suppose. But we don't even want to be an authority. And we, we don't want to be an be... authority. No. But right. I'm just, I'm explaining yeah. how it is in the traditional yeah, sense, yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. Like, yeah, I'm trying to think what we, it's, it's none of that. No. <laughs> it's um, so, that's such a tough question. Because um, we want us to be voluntary, we want it to be for everybody. Yeah, and it's really interesting because, Kieran, you often talk about the truth and you come back to the truth. And the thing is with uh, traditional education systems, they believe that their curriculum is the truth, that they're working yeah. from mm. the truth, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking to see what Finland actually calls themselves because perhaps it's in the wording. Um, yeah, and even like with what, regardless of what they call themselves, like yeah, like in this case, like the school of Bitcoin can call we can call it something completely different. But yeah, like it, it's so helpful to know these because just like now I'm going to research these just so I understand. Like I didn't know about any of this before. Yeah, but then yeah, like yeah. Me, how the knowing how the traditional system works it'll just help me frame my mm. a little better so yeah so, so like, this is something you get hung up on but i that's yeah so what, national curriculum framework they they talk about a national curriculum framework in finland um mm. which we could talk about maybe would that would that work with the framework um job description yeah i'll put it in for yeah i'll just put curriculum uh, framework and maybe it's to do with 21st century skills framework um or 21st century financial skills framework would that work i'll put it in for now that works for me <laughs> but yeah we just, can keep uh just thinking like with with like akara so it's like the yeah. national data collection right maybe we flip that so we're doing the inverse of what they're doing so it's instead of data collection we're empowering uh, people to create data distribution. It, yeah and instead of it being national it's international uh, or, well how about universal universal yes i like that yeah so um, what, do you, what do you think so universal data maybe even data is the wrong word it's not data no nah. it's it's not data because that's Knowledge. can i just put i'm going to put something Knowledge, in the chat yeah. this is in the chat window so it develops the curriculum so we're developing a mm. curriculum and mm. it gives teachers parents students and the community a clear understanding and we want clear understanding of what students right. should learn um so aren't we doing sort of the same thing and the difference mm. I think is then um, so perhaps we're similar to Akara in that we're presenting um, what we feel they should learn, but the difference perhaps is maybe when it comes down to the assessment, um, and maybe maybe the difference is when we come down to the assessment, it's in the way that the assessment is delivered as opposed to us looking back and scoring it with regards to the rubric or the uh, 
the scoring sheet with regards to an A, B, C, D, E. Maybe yeah. it's in the assessment mm -hmm. where the difference is, because I don't like the word authority, but I think actually what you're trying to develop is like an ACARA, but it's universal, a universal ACARA, because there's mm. nothing wrong in that statement. Um, the difference, I think, is you don't want to be seen as the authority because an authority, the authoritarian form is the antithesis of what you're trying to achieve. But That's I think right. where the difference is, is in the assessment, because what you're saying is anybody can do this and nobody gets it wrong. Um, failure, mm -hmm. um, like Kieran, like I, when I came in this morning and said, oh, I've lost some coins, you know, well, that's an expensive lesson, but it's not a failure, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I've done the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, I love that lesson, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's hope I don't repeat it. Um, mm. So, yeah, I think it's, I think taking a step back, it's in the, um, the way that we perceive our or reflect upon our lessons, we're not judging people to, to get a C. Um, we're constantly yeah. saying, um, rate mm -hmm. yourself. Maybe it's a rate yourself type of, I don't know. Maybe, you, maybe you're right. Maybe it is an authority, but it's a decentralized authority. Mm. So there's no uh -huh. single point of failure. Yeah. Um, I think. I think these are good starts. Yeah. Not the way to get, that's that's really, but like, yeah, that's. I think just as long as we can start just getting the wheels turning on this, I think it'll make it easier for for people to be like, oh, okay, that's that's. I, I can definitely. I know what they're talking about there. Um, yeah. Like the main product that comes from this service maybe is like the assessment protocol, right? Because that's like the. What would you call the um. Like the map that you have, like the, the flow. Uh, the, is that to me? Is that, that question's to me? That was, I'm sorry, that's to, to Kieran. Oh, yeah. Oh, you um, mean uh, so for the, um, yeah, the diagram? Um, I feel like, like that's the product that you're, that the whole entire mm. thing is created, right? Like that's, yeah. Like, um, what, would you, what would you call that? Uh, open learning network. Okay. Definitely. Oh, perfect. Mm. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Um, yeah, is there any other service that exists that serves as the inspiration for your creating? Maybe is it like the standalone school, maybe? Uh, <laughs> you, is, or, is Khan, or, is, yeah, is the Khan Academy something similar? I asked, I think I asked that question before, didn't I? And I think somebody did respond to it. Kieran, did you respond to it? Yeah, I think Khan Academy or MOOCs, um, yes. definitely a yeah jump off point. So we want to create something very similar. Okay. Uh, but a decentralized um, version of that, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and, and I suppose, like, with going back to the MOOCs and Khan Academy, um, mm -hmm. it's learner owned. I think that's the, kind of the, because we're all learners mm -hmm. building it together. For, I think. For here, for the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, I mean, maybe that's not the place to put it, but yeah, whatever. We can figure Just it out. Having interesting in that when you say learner owned when you look at something like kahoot as well um have you used the kahoot system yeah yeah so people will build the quizzes right and then at the end of a, a turn you oh. know i'll go in and go oh Macbeth, who's done what and I, you know you sort of on the fly often because because you've run out of time you go oh quick let's do this one you think ah. but some teacher in some universe has created it and sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad but it's it's still it's engaging often engaging and the kids will learn sometimes and point out the mistakes in it so maybe the kahoot sort of idea is yeah yeah that's sort of process. a process yeah cool. the only thing then is with kahoot um there's no necessarily none of them are necessarily perfect do you know what I mean? Sometimes you get some really good quizzes, but sometimes. I mean, I think that's what's going to happen with this, right? Like, there yeah, are yeah that's, that's what you want. Blown yeah. repositories, and, but like the best ones are going to be the ones that get that, that grow. Yeah, yeah exactly. But I think that the hoot is, yeah, that's a, that's a good uh, analogy. That is, I, I forgot about that, but mm. when I tutored, like, the kids showed me that, and I'm like, this is sweet. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Um, so this next section, so that was like decentralization. That's like the industry that we're looking at and how School of Bitcoin is going to come at it a little differently. And then for this next section for space, uh, this is for 
like with this, especially with the school of Bitcoin, it's an increasingly digital world. This is meant to define how the community is going to transform our physical reality by like bringing people together or creating tangible products and objects. So like this is kind of like, you can think of this as like, what's the project-based learning? Um, is, would there be like an intro one for, for people coming into the school of Bitcoin? I know you're talking about building a, mm. a node. Um, yeah, actually that's probably it's, a really good example. This wouldn't be a thing, but it would be like a, an optional project that people could do as they go through this. Yeah, I think that's probably Probably number okay. one, actually. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And Bitcoin node, cool. And I, I still don't have that, so this would be good for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that together. Actually, yeah, I was, there... ran, was running through it with one of my friends, and um, his is still syncing. I forgot how long it takes to actually sync up the Bitcoin nodes. Oh, wow. It's so irritating. <laughs> uh, is there um, is there a good tutorial that you know of? Like, is there? A, like, is well, there that's a best that's one something. That... I guess my node. I guess, I guess that's what this is, right? That's what this is. Like my node's probably the yeah. best, but even then I got confused and I had to look like elsewhere. Okay. All right. Um yeah, I guess we'll have to go find that we can go off of and then from there we can this will be like the kind of like an iteration on it. Um yep. or I guess you already know. So um what projects and this one is like, okay, what project do you appreciate that you want to promote throughout the community? I mean, this could be a core, it could be a nonprofit organization, it could be a, another project, just like as the School of Bitcoin's coming up, you're like, also, if you like what we're doing, you'll definitely like these guys over here, just like a, a way to kind of like- Okay, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. With um, others. Project to promote. Well, I suppose um, Stacks, that'll be the, the one that we're mm -hmm. sort of building Perfect. off. So that Kind of makes sense. Yeah, right? very good. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, and then uh, this last section with time. This is really like there's not there's not too much that there's nothing that you really need to answer here. This is just to show the different sections and kind of like what we're going through. So I'll even just run through these real quick. So the first one is meant to to let you know, okay. This is like our open source mission statement. And like, there's just gonna be like a, a conceptual design of that. So uh, I'll have like a few well, different I, just- Actually, Jump, just thinking out loud, this might be perfect for Wednesday. So this part, mm. I, I've, I've got a meeting after our meeting with the Stacks guys. Maybe I can run through this with them around deliverables oh, yeah. for, for School of Bitcoin. Oh, perfect, yeah. Um, yeah, so like you could, yeah, you could easily just say like we're gonna solidify the school of Bitcoin's mission statements by this date, and then after that, we're gonna have like our community roadmap, the conceptual design, and this is gonna be like what we just ran through right now, saying like how they're gonna build their own Lightning node, or, or not Lightning you node, know, Bitcoin node, and then um, just explaining how like the community plan is about decentralizing like the authority that's currently in the education system. Yeah. After that, yeah. after that, we'll be diving into the the brand identity. So, like, there'll be a date when we're like, okay. And for this, uh, let me see if I can. This on my iPad is not easy, <laughs> but uh, let me see. If there was a, I can't remember where I saved it. I don't want to waste your time with it now. But there's like there's super <laughs> simple Figma files. And it's just like the design files. We can, we're just going to clone it over and it'll be us choosing fonts. It'll be us choosing a few colors, like, and then that'll be like, this is the con conceptual design of our brand identity just to get it started. And then after that, we'll be able to say like what the, the marketing strategy is. So a lot of like Jill's ideas, we'll be able to start mm. throwing these around and being like, okay, okay. Um, can I really, like can I jump sure. in really? Yeah, really yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. I was just, I was just thinking as you were talking, you know, the Patreon site. Um, so I just brought up, I mean, I've, I've got in there loads of times, but it's just interesting when you bring up their site and it's got change the way art is valued. Um, you know, their slogan, change the way education is delivered. Um, you know, Ooh. they've got a lot of things in here that I think we could actually just learn from and even search the 200,000 plus creators on Patreon. It's like, um, we could have searched the 200 or a million um, contributors to the School of Bitcoin. Um, you know, what's, I, I love 
but actually the design and then you know develop they've got develop a reoccurring income stream take back creative control but even even these stories that are here and the way it's laid out i think maybe we could learn a few lessons from the layout maybe i'm maybe i'm on the rank wrong track there but what do you think no i think that sounds cool yeah great i'll put, I put them in the uh the inspiration here so inspiration like yeah yeah academy Kahoot, and patreon so like yeah. then we'll just put that in our back pocket like like how like they their messaging and all that it'll be easy for us to kind of just adapt it and, and uh, yeah. make it work for what we're doing here. For sure, um, that's yeah. This I mean, in some really ways, nice, yeah. In some ways, we are yeah. the Patreon, the Patreon of financial literacy for schools, right? Education. We're yeah. like a yeah. Patreon, and you know, building our own creator economy, um, which this system will sit under for people to basically mm. use the platform. So essentially, we're yeah. building a platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's like very really, that's very powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Yeah, because yeah, like a way that you can think about it is like each one of these DAOs and then like the subsequent like sub DAOs, they're all going to be their own Patreons within themselves. But then, if if we can create them with a similar structure, it's going to have to be the same. Then we can just create APIs between them, so like they'll be able to communicate with one another, but they'll be completely autonomous. They'll be their own, yes, yeah. and then they'll just they'll settle with the days um yeah yeah so well, yeah that's that's yeah. the that's the education system isn't it? that's great yeah yeah, yeah. it's, it's so it then, helps it helps having that visual actually of, of um of the Patreon. yeah, yeah. It does, doesn't it just it only just very, occurred to me then when you were talking jack i was like yeah i think actually this <laughs> this might marry up in a very Ooh. like quite simple clear easy way for people to come on and go that it simplifies it down in a powerful way doesn't it as to how yes. yeah as to how we cool. can make it work for people yeah that's really what well, i suppose instead of the two hundred thousand plus uh patreon creators yeah. we've got everybody on github that could potentially be a part of this as well already yeah yeah mm. yeah. The, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> however many users yeah, are on cool. github uh. yeah and I think that that's a cool way to, to think about this because we'll be able to be like, I mean, Patreon and their community could even make a curriculum, right? Like, yes, yes, uh, correct, correct. Get, could make a curriculum on this. So, like, as saying, like, oh, we're like the Patreon of blah, 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 like, that'll be us describing it in that way will kind of like create a case study for how Patreon could do this in their own way. And mm -hmm. then that yeah. could like track them in. Yeah. So, that's, that's so cool. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa, 56 million people on GitHub. That's crazy. Mm. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so yeah, that's like so we'll have a marketing strategy. The then like the next deliverable will be us uh defining the marketplace conceptual design. Mm. Uh, this is gonna be like the uh the NFT marketplace essentially, and um how students will be able to uh, mint their their nfts or choose to buy them to like give money back into the network so like this is going to be mapping out how that actually works and what it looks like um after that it'll be okay after after we have the mission statement roadmap we have the brand identity marketing strategy in the marketplace then we'll we'll be a good place where we'll be able to write like i mean this will give us a little bit more context and clarity into how we write the the white paper um and then um, along with that uh, is like the, the story section is how we can like engage the creator community so that they can turn like the Bitcoin, the school of Bitcoin white paper into like graphic novels and creative, like creative, uh, creative stories uh, to show how the roadmap of the school of Bitcoin can be turned into like a superhero story. There can be like, different artists that have different storylines based on like the stuff that people are learning and the products that people are creating as they go through this. So that's the concept there. And with this, it's just going to be like a very, 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 very high level storyboard. And then the idea is that like artists in the community can kind of like run with it however they like. Um, the next deliverable will be the, the this is like the, the whole point of it, right? So this will be the actual curriculum. <laughs> Uh, so this would be like the community course that uh, as we go through all of this, we'll be like, okay, which parts of this do we want to teach people and how do we integrate 
financial literacy into the course. And then, so like this chunk of it uh, is going to feed a lot of, feed off of what we really work on with you, Jill. And yep. so like, as you start creating the curriculum, all of that energy is going to be funneled into this aspect of the School of Bitcoin days. Um, mm. So that's probably like a way to think about it. So like since the days of the layer zero, the curriculum DAO as the layer one, yep. all the work that we work on there is going to be informing this. So like the days in this section is kind of just like a container. And then everything we work on above is going to be really feeding down the actual tangible information. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I think um, the next section will be us coming up with like, the, and this is kind of going to be like the tokenomics aspects, mm. still like the open learning network. So it's going to be like, how do we incentivize people to share on Instagram? How do we incentivize people to share on Twitter? It's going to be like the gamification aspects. Can we have like a bracket system that comes in? So like people with their different projects who creates the most creative uh, Bitcoin nodes. So that's, like, that's what this section like whatever your favorite games are, this is where you can kind of plug in, plug that in as, as creative as you want to get. And then V9 Journal is like with this, um, it's just going to be like us defining what is the date for um, for us, like kind of to say like our note-taking system. And for us, in this case, it's just GitHub. Um, but then, so like that's, that's with, like with the that, With that gamer token um, section, just thinking, should we have a part? I know we said we weren't going to do a governance token, but maybe we should. Should we have that as an aspect of building mm -hmm. out the like layer zero? So like having a, a, a date set for that or even a, mm -hmm. a goal or something um, so that we actually have that in place sort of moving down the track. Right, that, there, that's like the... Are you thinking this along the lines of like stacks since like yeah. you'd be using the pool, right? Yeah. So maybe like, um, I think, cause like the, the, the product that we're working on here is the open learning network, right? So I think that'll be included in here. So maybe okay. that, yeah. So you, you want to put an actual hard date on here so that when, when we. Maybe. Yeah. Or is it a, yeah. uh, what do you think? Or a goal, maybe like so. Yeah, once you. Well, I was thinking like once you achieve sort of ten thousand, uh, the ten thousand mark of users, you dissolve into a DAO, and then you have your governance token. But maybe we oh, build it cool. before then. Maybe it's a, like a mm -hmm. a date where we have it set, we have it built, um, but it's not mm -hmm. implemented until sort of that. Yeah, that mark until we actually hit that That's mark, cool. and we can migrate from having that multi sig wallet between us into. A governance token that can be owned by learners as well the more i think about it the more i think we need that on the roadmap yeah. at some point yeah With the, the, like when we when we dissolve into a dow you're saying yeah 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 mm. i mean yeah i think that's a good idea and i think this would be kind of where where it, where it plays in would be this yeah this yeah so Cause it's like, it's, it is, it's akin to a gamer token, but it's mm -hmm. like, a, it's, it's, it's a part of the DAO that learners can own as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, and it, you know, teaches you about the tokenomics and that side of things as well. And like yeah. by us doing it, other people can learn from that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, yeah. So I guess that's the, really the, I think that's what I wanted to kind of suss out of this. So that's the main focus of this is us figuring out like the, the tokenomics of all of this, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, days, so. Um, and, and, yeah, do you call it something like the teacher token? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just thinking um, something, you know, that's short, you know, when it goes up there, you know, you've got to think, I suppose the School of Bitcoin token is fine, but it's quite long. I'm just thinking teacher token or. Learner token, maybe. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, I mean, we can think yeah. about a name for it, but I think it needs it needs a name, doesn't it? That's catchy. That maybe yeah, maybe teacher token because like the mm -hmm. the end goal is like no teachers, no students, just learners like learning together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Te but maybe teaching that's, ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the token replaces the role of the teacher. Excuse me. In the in a traditional sense, so you have you yeah. don't have that 
the person standing at the front of the room. It's it's kind of you with the community. And yeah, I like that chill. Maybe yeah, check it again. yeah, it's it's quite it, it stays in your mind probably easier than um learner token yep. in some respects because learner is a bit more yep. passive whereas teaching is more active yep um yep. yeah and you could maybe play with the spelling maybe take out the e so it's a bit shorter for i don't know you know how people have got funny spells on things i don't know just yeah, mucking yeah. around to, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. anyway yeah, it's just cool. an idea at this stage yeah yep yeah i, like that. Yeah, I love it it's your token. that's cool uh okay cool and then yeah, is so like the, this. This is kind of like the the roadmap section of it. Um, you can think of it in, as like the the school of bitcoins. Like in like the hero's journey, it's like the, the call to action. Um, mm -hmm. Is there like a song a song that you would want to attribute with this uh, with this section here? This section, uh, yeah. not off the top of my head. I'll have a think. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have to For get? Sure. Um, is there an IP associated with these songs? Oh yeah. What's that? Is there an IP associated with these songs? That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. only thinking that, you know, if it's, if it can be, anybody can put in anything, that's, I suppose, their own, their own, you know, it's, it's not our liability, it's what they choose. But at the same time... Yeah, but we're passing on that, right? <laughs> 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 passing on the risk unknowingly, right? Um, yeah, unless you make it up uh you know a, a song for the, the school of bitcoin <laughs> i don't know yeah that's a good point yeah. which yeah, I, yeah. I mean i don't know if we'd be like this i mean you can kind of think of this as like a just like an internal outline i guess i don't know if we're i don't know if we'd be necessarily but i guess i do it in some way right so maybe it is is that the same with the books though yeah, that's, um, that's it, isn't it? Recommendations for a book, I think, maybe is. I mean, it's maybe it's just a, a recommendation. Have a so, listen to this song. Yeah, sure. You can't get in trouble for really telling don't. someone to listen to a song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's recommendation, so it, you're not actually selling it or anything. So, right. yeah, it's yeah. probably it's probably fine. Yeah, I'm sure as if more lawyers enter the network, they'll be able to clarify. <laughs> as, yeah, as long as you're not building your brand on a Beatles song or something like that, you know. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, but that's not that's like not the most important thing here. I think we got through the most. Uh, it was. I think this is really cool talking through like the um, the industry and role that uh, mm -hmm. the school of Bitcoin's taking. That that helped a lot to clarify would, would there be um, like a place in there in this part do you think uh Jacques, like just to put um maybe instead of a song like a reference to a, a piece of media that might have inspired like whatever project you're working on so like for for me yeah. there's been so many clips particularly like i'd love to include something by andreas antonopoulos like there's been so mm. many of his mm. clips on youtube that i've watched and it's just changed my thinking on absolutely yeah. everything yeah. So um, for beef food media, when we're building out the brand, you're going to be actually, there's going to be videos that we plug in for. Okay, movies. so we got a whole so dedicated we'll space. That, yeah, so cool, cool, cool. When we're filling out the brand, it's going to be like, let's put some videos in that people can watch and they can feel something. Yeah. And then based on that, we're going to be like, okay, now let's think of like colors and vibes and uh, like imagery. So yeah, we'll be yep. able to start digging into that. Uh, into the, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's do that. Cool. Uh, that sounds good. Um, in fact, I'd love to include uh, Peter Hutton's uh, TED talk as well because that's that's really powerful. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good, and I think uh, have a watch of it if you haven't seen it. Yet, I will. I will do that this morning. Yeah. It's cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a good, really good start. Thanks, Steve's. Yeah, yeah. You put in so much work. It's yeah, amazing. so much work. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. yeah this is fun. Fantastic. So cool. <laughs> so cool. Bye. So cool. Really exciting. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coin's gonna be able to put so much, uh, so much really interesting, uh, so yeah. many creative. But yeah, just well, well, yeah. Wednesday. Of, so I'm gonna be in Canberra uh, as of tomorrow. So I'll be in I'll be in Canberra uh, on Wednesday. So we've got the meeting in the morning, and there's a meeting afterwards. Do you guys want to jump into the stacks meeting as well? 
Oh, I'll shoot, shoot through an invite. So that's, yeah, it'd be great. Sure, it'll be cool. Um, and yeah, then we can figure out. I know um, Gordon and Electra have done like a lot of research into how we actually set it up, um, like legally. So um, I'll get get them in as well because it's yeah, it's all that stuff's kind of over my head. I kind of like, like tend to just like not think about it because I don't <laughs> care about it. But <laughs> Yeah, it's important. Like, it's important. It, that it's important, but I'm like, properly, I'm not, yeah. I'm not money driven at all with this project. So it's kind of like the opposite. It's like the opposite of the end goal. So it's like, well, why do I have to care about like all that stuff? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I reckon it'll be good. Um, it's ironic, eh? Because financial literacy project, and you're not motivated by money. Sounds weird. Um, <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah. So that that'll be really interesting, and I think they they'll probably have some direction on how we actually build out um things like the the pool so that's what i'm really yep. keen on um and you guys will probably have some some experience and some uh, have you have you used any like uh pools on ethereum or anything yet um either of you well i'm trying <laughs> Uh, that's the whole point. I've been trying my liquid pairing and losing coins, and yeah, it's um, a lot of fun. Don't worry, I've I've lost. I dread to think how much money I've lost over the years. That, that's my like, this oh, week, Jack. That's this project looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's nuts. I had uh, there was one called um, Kadena. Have you heard of Kadena? So it's it's a pretty cool project, like interoperable. Um, oh, okay. Block, blockchains. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, really really cool stuff so i was like i actually started mining it so that these miners from um gold shell that i got one i'm like oh this is great got right into it started mining and um like you know you set up with your pool of miners like an address to send it to yep. so I had this um they got this decentralized wallet that's like is hosted between nodes i was like oh that's so cool like makes a lot of sense anyway it got like hacked by a hacked. bot and um yeah, like all my funds just like disappeared. I'm like, oh no, jumped on the Discord and they're like, oh yeah, there was a disclaimer down the bottom of the wallet. Didn't you see? I'm like, no, I didn't read that. <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's what worries but, me with what uh, I've done is like, has it been hacked? You know, but uh, I can see it sitting there on Polygon scan. So I don't know nah, whether I can get it I back think or not. Polygon, yeah, I'll, I'll find my notes on yeah, what I did with cool. the um, that pool and see if we can help yeah. you. And it's interesting in talking through this because this is this is all ourselves teaching ourselves and learning yeah. from the uncertainty and the confusion, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I suppose what we're doing is to try and systematize and collate material that contributes to that evolving development as we're moving forward because at the moment the people who know actually are just sort of like the blind leading the blind to see if, if somebody else has got a better idea because it's all being developed and built right yeah exactly and so quickly as well and so that's quickly. The thing. and it's yeah, it just takes people that are like excited by new tech which um i am like and it's it's funny because it's not it's not always just about you know i think a lot of people in the in the industry or in the uh i guess what would you call it? Or just investors are just mm. interested in like number go up like oh i want to invest in this to see if i can make more money off it um which really is you kind of learn is the wrong goal but there's the tech side of stuff as well so like that kadena mm. project i'm like oh this is so cool like what a great concept yeah um and i still think it's a great concept like and and they're building it out but i yeah. think that's that's something we probably want to impart by us going through this stuff as well it's like well the end goal is not really about like how much fiat can you accrue it's about like what's the best tech um to yeah. you know facilitate whatever it is so yeah. yeah and in the in the curriculum i suppose we can address that but also i think jacques we talked about the emotional um intelligence around um thinking about money and what money actually in generating income and wealth how you then invest back in yourself your community and um the balance that needs to be achieved and i think that's an important part of the curriculum that we need to run as a sustained portion moving through um so that 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 in itself because one thing that worries me is that you know crypto can for some people become the new sort of gambling um yes yep and, and that's not and maybe that then comes back to what Peter was saying, you know, am I, am I right in doing this? Cause it sort of feels mm. like I'm going to a, you know, a, a digital casino. Um, 
and and that's oh, that's, that's not that's what we're trying to yeah. gambling what is can you just what is that oh gambling oh gambling okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Gambling. <laughs> i was like Kieran was like, yeah, like maybe it's an australian thing it's, <laughs> what, is, what are these crazy australians talking about yeah. <laughs> Yeah, gambling. It does. It feels like a casino, like yeah. a, a lot of those exchanges. Well, and that's the other aspect as well. Like if you look at like a DEX versus like a centralized exchange, yeah. very different feeling and a de- very yes. different uh, mottos behind them. So like what, yes. uh, like I was saying earlier, like what Eric Voorhees is doing with his company in Shapeshift, you compare mm. that to something like um, a Coinspot, it's two yes, very, yes. very different feel. Like Coinspot looks like a casino and... Yeah, his his software doesn't like it feels yeah. like a yeah like a, like a Dex, but he's also got his hardware and stuff. He's built mm. it out with the right mindset, I think. Actually, just on that note, probably I should add to the curriculum with regards to the fees that you pay and hidden fees because with CoinSpot, when I first arrived, I thought, oh, it's great, put my money down. But the fees and um, you don't you don't understand that when you first. So I need to look at the curriculum and sort of look at those mm. what that yep. means for for people. For sure. I had yeah, no 100%. idea. It's been a journey. <laughs> yeah. No, it's huge. It's huge. Oh, thanks heaps, guys. Well, I'll, I'll shoot through a yeah, an invite for Wednesday. Uh, like we'll have our usual meeting and then straight after we've got the other one. So Sounds good. Sounds good. good. And we, I think I've got a bunch of people coming in on Wednesday as well, like for the first meeting. So Great. we'll probably have to rehash everything again, but that's all right. <laughs> all right. Brilliant. Awesome. Okay. All Thank right. you. See Thank you. you. See you guys. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.